Some massive leaks just dropped. NVIDIA's RTX 5070 Super and 5070 Ti Super specs are out and they are packing insane power requirements. We're gonna check that out, but that is just the beginning. Pallet's Oktoberfest edition RTX 5080 is here to put a beer fuel twist on your GPU, while a fearless modder just turned a laptop RTX 2070 into a desktop beast with a risky shunt mod. Oh, and also Logitech's next gen MX Master 4 mouse has haptic feedback. That's gonna change how you work. You know the drill let's get into it yeah that's right your pc is it's just too boring palette has put on a freaking beer festival on an rtx 5080 and no the oktoberfest edition is not real but i'm going to make a case and i need your help with this that we need palette to come through and actually make this gpu let's check it out that's right this came out like last week and i didn't get a chance to talk about it and uh, i really really think that if they actually made a card like this a ton of people would buy it check it out palette has raised a glass to its fans with a new oktoberfest themed ad the company should shared an AI photo of a graphics card that looks more like a pint of beer than a GPU. Now this isn't the next Blackwell design leak, it's marketing. Now there is some cool stuff that comes with this on the palette side of things. It's the palette maker program. I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but first check this out. This is what they shared over on Twitter, AKA X or whatever we're calling it this week. Uh, this is the palette Oktoberfest edition 5080. It's AI, why? Why not make this an actual GPU? I've talked for a long time about doing a custom build here at MetaPCs where we built in like a beer keg somehow. I don't know how we'd accomplish it, but it would be cool nonetheless. This leans right into the custom design aesthetic. We've got enough anime cards. We've done anime cards for a long time. They're all over the place. It's You can find one on every street corner for the most part, but we've not had any beer GPUs. This is a great opportunity. I know it's AI, but palette, come on. Let's talk about the maker program though. This is what's actually pretty interesting about this. The maker program, very, very cool. They are leaning more into this. Maker lets users print and attach three 3D design parts to their cards with palette providing those files. Think of it as dressing your GPU up for the season. So you can do a whole bunch of stuff with this. You download the files, you decide what you want to print on your GPU, whether it's like a theme for your build, a show that you like, a movie, something. You can do anything with this. And I, I hope that more companies lean into this, even with cooler caps. I know some companies like Cooler Master are starting to allow for those design files to be downloaded. So you can 3D print a replacement with your own design on it. But nonetheless, I regret rest. Palette, come on. We need a beer stein GPU, please. No more AI, make it for real. I know I'd pick one up. Let me know if you're on board in the comments down below. Listen, I've been rocking the Logitech C920 webcam for ages, but there are some things that it just can't do. For example, the focus is fine when I'm sitting, but when I stand up, I can't walk around and rage at getting my ass kicked at whatever game I'm playing without things being blurry. So I switched to Obsbot's Tiny 2 Lite, and this thing is noticeably better at basically everything. The difference in image quality is just night and day. The Tiny 2 Lite has a bigger sensor and a better processor. 1080p videos already look a lot cleaner and are smoother since they're at 60 FPS. You can also crank the resolution up to 4K at 30 FPS. The rotating mount and gimbal have no trouble keeping up with whatever I do. And sure, the camera gives off GLaDOS vibes when it's following you around, but once you turn it off, the head drops to give you a little bit of privacy. The dual directional mics are not gonna replace your dedicated streaming mic, but they do deliver clear audio during business calls where whipping out your quadcast would kind of be awkward. Obsbot has enhanced the camera with several AI features, and I know, I know, AI, but hear me out. Unlike Ghibli AI Slop, these are actually useful. The AI helps it track you at various distances and can recognize gestures, which is just great for those unexpected Zoom gags. You can turn the gestures on in the app, but that's just a fraction of its power. Obsbot Studio's clean interface lets you quickly adjust everything from several tracking modes to filters and image tweaks. Exposure compensation is the absolute best feature and I use it all the freaking time. It is super helpful when the shot could be a bit brighter, but you can't be bothered to fiddle with your lighting setup. Background blur, that is another banger and a must when you want people to focus on you instead of your Funko Pop collection. Guys, I'm loving 
loving the tiny to light upgrade, especially for the price. And you will too, if you're a content creator or a streamer, or you just wanna flex on all the 720p noobs on your next conference call. You can check the link in the description to get one of your own. Stop throwing away your old gaming laptops. A modder just used a risky shunt mod to give his RTX 2070 mobile a 60 watt boost, unlocking free desktop performance. This proves that you've got a whole bunch of power hiding in mobile chips. Now, if you could safely unlock 15% more for performance from one piece of hardware in your PC by voiding the warranty, which component would you choose? Well, he chose the GPU. Let's take a peek. All right, shunt modding. You hear about this all the time. Der Bauer just did a crazy shunt mod on an Astral 5090 water-cooled 800 watt draw on it. Crazy. It's where you modify the controller for your GPU. It involves reducing the resistance of current sensing heat sensors that makes the device's controller think that less current is being drawn, so you're tricking it to allow higher power and current to the GPU. So bypassing factory set limits, things like that, which allows for more headroom on overclocking for GPUs. Now this guy did it on a mini PC, not a laptop, but it is a mobile GPU in this thing, which is very interesting. Let's check this out. Mobile RTX 2070 with shunt mod nearly eclipses desktop performance. You got a 60 watt boost and a 15% performance uplift. Check this out. Now there's a whole lot that goes into this. I don't recommend this for pretty much anybody unless you are crazy and you really want to try to squeeze out some performance. If you have an older piece of tech that you're not currently using and you want to mess around with, it's not a bad idea. I'm going to break down how he did this, what the process is a little bit. I'm not going to dig into it super deep, but let's at least scratch the surface and see what happened here. A PC enthusiast reports successfully shunt modding his NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 mobile GPU for a 15% performance uplift. An uplift of this scale would bring the 2070 mobile roughly to performance parity with the desktop counterpart. Now, obviously, like when you go with a mobile GPU, you're going to take a performance hit compared to the desktop version. That's just how it goes. You're dealing with a smaller form factor, less cooling. They're just not as powerful as their desktop counterparts. This guy said, no, no. I will make it as powerful as its desktop counterpart. In fact, I'll make it more powerful. PC Games Hardware form member Her Bull says he pushed the mobile GPU through its power limited ceiling of 115 watts all the way to 175. So this is very cool. He uh, was working on a bigger project where he wanted to rehouse and water cool this Zotac mini PC. And as I mentioned before, swapping out a shunt resistor on the graphics card PCB for one with lower resistance value gets more current to the GPU without messing with the VBIOS. Getting more power to the GPU can make a significant difference to its performance, especially if you see system tools reporting that your graphics performance is typically power limited. With a rehoused mini PC and water cooling plans, it's easy to understand why Herbolsch was attracted to the idea of trying this crazy old thing. And as you can see, you have to use thermal on a lot of this stuff to figure out if you're making an oopsie or not to measure temps. Why? Well, as is explained here, Herbolsch checked with a physical watt meter. With this kind of mod software tools, like you're usually using HW Info or GPU-Z, that's still going to show the pre-modded values on that. So what do you use? You also use thermal cameras as well. Herbal shared some thermal camera images, which you can see right here, and suggests that there's nothing to worry about in the aftermath. Top component temperatures, 80 degrees Celsius under load. Let's do a little side-by-side. -side. He provided this. This is super helpful. So you have the average 2070 mobile, which is uh, what he has in this system. Shows time spy, fire strike, all that good stuff. Steel Nomad. Coming in with the water cooling plus shunt mod, a massive increase up to 25% on a lot of this stuff when it comes to performance and handily beating the average 2070 desktop, which is to be expected with all the modifications that happened here. Now, while this is super cool, this is really cool. I don't want to knock it at all. You also have to understand the inherent risk that comes with this as well. For the average user, you're going to end up, I mean, obviously in doing this, voiding warranties, potentially completely ruining your system as well, and uh, frying components. But this, if nothing else, is a great demonstration of what's possible if you like to do a little little bit of tinkering. Let me know if you would mess with shunt modding on a piece of hardware that you currently have in the comments down below. If you got plans for it, let me know what you're scheming up down below. Stop clicking and start feeling because the new Logitech MX Master 4 just made every other office mouse obsolete. This thing's got haptic feedback. It's not a gaming gimmick. This is a productivity monster with the action ring shortcut menu. If one computer peripheral could give you a sense of touch to boost your work, this might be the one. And I have a few reasons why this is great, let's talk about it. So Logitech launches a new mouse. What's the big deal, right? What are we even talking about here? Well, this one is particularly interesting for productivity. In fact, we have a couple guys at the office who ordered this mouse, very excited about it on the productivity side of things, and here's why. 
Uh, it's coming, by the way, to Tom's Hardware. Logitech launches this MX Master 4, and according to them, I haven't tried it yet, the best mouse we've tested adds haptic feedback, circular ring shortcuts. This is uh, a rumble pack for productivity, which is kind of fun. Now, this is to replace the MX Master 3S. The MX Master 4 carries everything that you love about the 3S, as is listed here, while adding haptic feedback and an action ring menu for commonly used tasks. So why haptic feedback on a mouse? Why does this have to be a thing? Why is this interesting for people? Well, if you're super into like video editing, graphic design, things like that, that can be super helpful when you're moving stuff around on a timeline or you're using Adobe products for editing and things like that, resizing windows with feedback. One of the interesting things that I didn't even think about that was brought up to me is this is actually great. If you were like, if you're hearing impaired, this could actually provide some really good feedback, haptic, so that you can understand like notifications going on, things like that. That's something that I hadn't even thought of. It could be super helpful for folks in addition to the productivity. Now, the other cool thing about this that I actually think might be cooler than haptic feedback is the actions ring. So this is how this works. Check it out. The circular menu uh, you can use by activating on your thumb within the thumb rest on the mouse itself. You can add shortcuts. So chat GPT, perplexity, Gemini copilot, all that stuff. You can use it to lock your workstation quickly just through that. You can open Windows Explorer, play and pause things, all do a screenshot, all of that just from your thumb on your mouse, which I think is probably the bigger feature on this mouse that is within Logitech's Options Plus software that is probably the most useful for this release. I think it's pretty cool and you can customize it too. So you can add things, open specific files, folders, macros, all that good stuff just within this actions menu that you can activate using your thumb, which is pretty sick. Let's talk about battery too. I was pretty interested in this. This is always like the worst thing about mice, especially for me. I'm on my system all freaking day. 70 days of use on a full charge and three hours use from charging it for a single minute. So that is pretty sick as well. And it comes in at 120 bucks. I mean, you can't beat it, right? Good stuff from Logitech. Let me know if this fits in your productivity workflow, if it would be useful for you in the comments down below. We've got leaks. We're leaking all over the place. Your next GPU is gonna need a bigger power supply. The specs just leaked for the 5070 Super and the 5070 Ti Super. And these mid-range cards are demanding massive TDP. This is gonna be very, very interesting. And it leaked from a pretty unusual spot. This came from Seasonic's website. Let's check it out. That's right, we've got a TDP leaked for the 5070 Ti and the 5070 Super. And uh, where did it show up? Of all places, Seasonic's power supply calculator, of course. We've talked about release on these cards. Some people said they're coming in October. Well, it is October, they're not here. It's gonna happen at CES. That's when it's gonna get announced and released. That's just when it's gonna happen. I mean, it makes the most sense, right? Biggest stage, makes sense why they would do that. There have been a ton of rumors on these cards as well, but now we have some information on power. That's right, Seasonic, amazing power supplies. They just listed a few 50 supermodels on its website as part of the power supply calculator. Now we're not getting much in the way of other specs on this, and you can check out the leak from Seasonic's website that shows the 5070 Ti Super and the 5070 Super up there on the site. Nothing about VRAM, none of that stuff. We kind of have an idea where it's gonna come in, which is very, very interesting. So here's what Seasonic is saying. They are saying that the 5070 Super has a 275 watt TDP, which based on earlier leaked specs, that's right on. So far, so good when it comes to specs on this. An additional 25 watts for the six gigabyte VRAM, that makes a whole lot of sense. Same goes for that 5070 Ti Super, that has a 350 watt TDP listed on the PSU calculator, which is a 50 watt increase over the RTX 5070 Ti. But there's something missing. I'm not seeing this anywhere. I'm refreshing. I keep refreshing. Where is it? Where is it? 5080 Super, not listed on here. And that had some previous leaks of 415 watt TDP. So we'll see where that comes in. I'm sure if we're gonna find it anywhere, now we know where to look. See Sonic's website, right? So we'll keep, uh, let me keep, let me refresh again. Nope, nothing. Let's revisit some of the memory leaks. Now, this isn't from Seasonic's site. This is stuff that has been leaked in the past. I'm just curious where you guys think it's gonna come in. Really, this is kind of the typical flow of when things get leaked, right? We start talking about VRAM and we get the power. As we get closer and closer, we'll start to talk about pricing. You'll see some of that start to leak. We are in the somewhat mid stages of leaks on these cards. Some of the stuff that's been reported and when it comes to memory on the 5080 Super, 24 gigabytes of VRAM, 415 watt TDP, and then obviously price is up in the air forever. 
everything. 5070 Ti Super, we talked about 350 watt TDP, 24 gigs of VRAM, touch under 9,000 CUDA cores. That's pretty interesting, especially if you're planning your build. Power is something that you're gonna wanna keep in mind with these new cards because of the draw. I mean, a 50 watt jump from the 5070 Ti to the Super is an interesting one. 25 watt jump from the 5070 to the 5070 Super. Nonetheless, still something you should keep in mind if you're picking out parts for a new build or you're looking at upgrading these cards with your existing build. These are things that you need to keep in mind as you were sorting out uh, where these supers slot into the lineup here. So Nvidia getting more aggressive on the VRAM, more aggressive on the power, really trying to dominate the mid range, 1440p high refresh, even 4K. That makes a whole lot of sense. But again, it's uh, be ready to upgrade potentially your power supplies if you plan on running these higher TDP mid range cards. Finally, 5070 Super coming at 18 gigabytes of VRAM, which is a nice six gigabyte increase over the 5070. Let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for the new super cards? Where do you think the pricing is going to come in? That's where things get juicy. As you can see here, you can see the price difference between the 5070 Ti, 5080 MSRP. Fortunately, a lot of those cards are starting to come down in price, making way obviously for the supers. So now there are some great deals on those cards. A lot of them coming in at under MSRP. That's right. I'll say it again because I never thought I'd say it in my entire life. Coming in under MSRP with some availability on that. So depending on where you're at, where your need is in terms of upgrades now might not be the worst time to upgrade new card, new system. If you can take advantage of some of the deals or are you gonna wait for super cards? That's up to you. Let me know where you slot on this in the comments down below. All right, guys, it's gonna do for today. As always, make sure you hit the old subscribe button to keep up with uh, news like this. Just hit 100,000 on the channel. That's pretty fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a lot of fun making content like this. If you enjoy it, hit subscribe and follow along on the journey. And as always, we'll see you next time.